Hello, Shoreline Church. It is Wednesday, September 30th, and we are in Psalm 150. Since the whole COVID thing began through this whole season, we've been walking. Initially, it was three times a week, then twice a week, now once a week. And we're going to stay with once a week, at least for the time being. If we need to, we can ramp that up more if we need to. But we've walked from Psalm 1 through Psalm 150. We've not done every Psalm, but all the ones that seem to speak into where we're at right now. I hope it's a blessing for you. And I want to read the entirety of Psalm 150 and just share. I want you to kind of listen for what it says about worship. And, and I, I notice in this psalm some things. It says where to worship, why to worship, how to worship, and who to worship, and who should worship. So listen for those things as I read Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and the lyre. Praise Him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with a clash of cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Boy, that comes up again and again, that one short psalm. That's the whole psalm, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So where? Where do we praise the Lord? I love this. Praise God in His sanctuary, in the formal places of gathering to worship. When we gather together, whether it's on, in, in the courtyard, whether it's online, whether it's in the, in the parking lot, anywhere we gather with God's people, praise Him in those places. But then praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him out there in this world that He's made. There are certain places that inspire people to worship. I love the ocean. When I'm near the ocean, even before I was a Christian, there was something about the ocean that sort of, I think, was awakening my soul to the reality of God's presence with me before I even knew about the love of Jesus and the presence of the Spirit and the hand of the Father. There was sort of an awareness. Maybe for you it's a desert. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's the ocean. Maybe it's at a lakeside. Maybe it's in the quiet of your background by your garden when you're gardening and, and planting your flowers or planting uh, food and, and, you know, whatever it is. Praise God in those formal settings and praise Him anywhere you walk in creation. Why would we praise Him? Look at verse 2. Praise Him for His acts of power, for His surpassing greatness. Who is He and what has He done? When you think of who He is, His great power, praise Him. When you think of His great acts and what He's done in your life and in our world, give Him praise. Even in tough times where tough things are happening, think about all the good things that God has done through history, through your life, and right now, and give God praise for those things. And then how do we praise Him? Verses 3, 4, and 5 with a trumpet, with dancing, with cymbals. Praise Him with music. Let music be part of your life. Engage and praise God. I, I played trumpet for, for six years as a kid, long before I was a Christian. When I became a Christian, I started playing guitar. But, but you know, if you play an instrument, glorify God with that. If you listen to instrumental music or vocal music, find ways to glorify God. Music is a way for God to unleash our hearts to give Him praise. So keep praising God. And if you haven't listened to the three songs that were linked to last week's devotion, I encourage you to go back, pick up that email, and listen to those songs. Let music move your heart. And then who? Who should praise God? Verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And who do we praise? We praise the living God. Only one God. But if you have breath, as long as you have breath, give praise to God in the great times and in the painful times, in the fun moments and the very serious moments. Our hearts should praise the Lord, praise the Lord, give praise to the Lord. God, we do that right now. We pause and we praise you for who you are. Glorious, holy, powerful, creator, lover of our souls. Holy, holy, holy. We praise you for who you are, filled with grace and mercy and kindness and gentleness towards us. And we praise you for all that you've done and all that you're doing right now and all you will do in the future. God, let us notice your goodness. Let us see your character and move us to be people of praise through all the seasons of life, from the depths of despair to the heights of celebration. You are God and we praise you you. And we pray this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope and pray that Psalm 150 has encouraged you, and I hope and pray that walking through the Psalms over these last five months have stirred your heart. Next week, I begin a top 10 countdown of my 10 
favorite Bible passages. Be thinking about your favorites and see if maybe some of them align with what are my favorites. It doesn't mean that these passages are more God's word than any other part. They're just ones that have touched my heart that I want to share with you and share a few reflections. I want to encourage you to register for worship in the courtyard for this coming Sunday. And I encourage you, if you're not coming to gather to worship because it's just more convenient to be home, start reconnecting, bring your family, be with us. If you have health issues or, or anxiety issues and you need to be at home, that's fine too. But register to be in your car in the parking lot or register to be in the courtyard and we'll have a spot waiting for you. And if you're gonna be online, God bless you there, but we'll see you all on Sunday in worship in the courtyard, in your car or at home. God bless you and have a great week.